Welcome to Frame Devotional, where the words of God is our sole authority. Let us pray. Our God, our help in ages past and our hope for years to come, we praise you for being our provider and our provision. You always satisfy God, and for that we give you glory and praise. Amen. The holidays can be a source of great stress, a time when our faith is really put to the test. Will we trust God to provide all our needs according to his riches, or do we become overwhelmed with the many I can't do's? God has a million ways of providing for his children. Philippians 4 verse 19 reminds us, And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. A Christmas story from Ukraine tells how God used spiders to bring joy to a family. The legend of the Christmas spiders tells of a widow who lived with her children in a small cottage. The kids longed to have a Christmas tree, but mom could not afford it. So they grew a little one, nurtured it, prayed over it, and finally it was big enough to be taken indoors. But the children's excitement soon wore off as they realized they had no decoration to put on the tree. As kids normally do, they broke down in tears. The legend is that the spiders, who were a nuisance in this old rundown cottage, heard the children crying and decided to weave webs in beautiful patterns all over the tree. So while the family slept, the spiders worked. When the children awoke and opened the windows, the sun's rays danced on the spider web, creating beams of multicolored light that made the tree seem magical. Since then, A Ukrainian Christmas includes Christmas trees with spider webs and little spider ornaments called pavushki. It shows that God provides for even the desire of a children's heart to have decorations. Psalm 145 verse 15 tells us, The eyes of all look expectantly to you, O God, and you give them their food in due season. In 1 Kings, verses 29 to 33, we are introduced to Ahab, one of the most cruel kings to ever rule Israel. He was the seventh king, and the Bible described him as being worse than Jeroboam. Not only did he introduce human sacrifice, he married Jezebel, and then he built all these altars to Baal and set up these fake gods in the temple of Samaria. 1 Kings 16 verse 33 tells us, Ahab also made a wooded image and did more to arouse the anger of the Lord, the God of Israel, than did all the kings of Israel before him. In response to the evil of the nation, God declared a drought and a famine on the land. Elijah the Tishbite was a messenger that God used to deliver his judgment. And poor Elijah had to run for his life after making this pronunciation. God told him in 1 Kings 17 verse 1, Leave here, turn eastward and hide in the Kareth ravine east of the Jordan. You will drink from the brook, and I have directed the ravens to supply you with food there. Elijah's God, our God, who instructs and commands every created being, instructed the brook to provide water and ravens to transport food. The account of God providing for Elijah is one that reminds us of God's love and commitment to his people. He promises to watch over us even when it defies logics, reason, and strength. Psalm 34 verse 10 tells us, The lions may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. 
So even if a lion in the prime of its life, strong and majestic, can find no food, those who seek God will lack no good thing. Elijah obeyed God, and as he sat by the brook, his food was catered by ravens. 1 Kings 17 verse 6 reads, The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning, and bread and meat in the evening, and he drank from the brook. Be encouraged that even when there's drought and famine all around, you will be kept. Even when kings and rulers and mighty lions face slack, you shall be kept because God promises this. God promised, Elijah believed. God chose a method of delivery, Elijah accepted. God instructed and Elijah obeyed and thus he was fed. So let me ask, Are you worried that there's no way to meet your needs? You see for yourself that there's a drought all around you. Remember, your God is a God for all seasons. Every created being are at his command. And he will give nations for you. And he will use whoever and whatever he chooses to bless you. There's a funny story of an atheist who brought bags of food to an old Christian woman who had been praying to God to supply her needs. He did this, he thought, to prove to her that there's no God. And so when he revealed himself to her, ah, there's no God who gave you the food. I brought you the food. The woman exclaimed, thank you, God, for blessing me and for even using the devil to bless me. The moral of the story is that God has a million and one ways of providing for you, his children. And God does not trivialize any of your needs or your desires. For the children in the Ukrainian folklore, it was decoration for their tree, still important to God. For Elijah, it was food and water, important to God. For you, it may be unpaid bills. It may be the need to provide a gift to family member, to neighbors. Whatever it is, it is important to God. God commands all things. Spiders, ravens, atheists, whatever is available. Everything is at his bidding. So don't worry, just trust. Maybe your desire is coming from unexpected sources. That's okay. Just trust and rest. When you awake, the tree will be decorated because God loves you just like that. Do not stress about anything. Let God be God. He enjoys providing for you. Psalm 84 verses 11 and 12 tell us, For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, blessed is a man who trusts in you. Let us pray. Father God, we're so grateful that you have a billion zillion, as the children would say, ways of providing for your people. We're so thankful, God, that every desire of our heart is important to you because that's just the kind of father you are. And so we commit, God, to trust you and to rest, knowing that you who have promised, you are faithful to keep all your promises. Thus we say, Amen and Amen. Amen.